There's a line somewhere, I think, in The Wizard of Oz, where the lion is singing, or uh, if I were king, maybe, maybe it's a different, maybe it's a Broadway play, but the line sticks in my mind, if I were king, well, America seems to have a king. Sadly. <laughs> Robert Brown has a thought or two about the executive powers of the executive branch. And mm -hmm. Robert, um, our president uh, seems to uh, have coined a new phrase, and that is, I'm going to bypass Congress. Yes, and another phrase he recently coined was, I have a pen and I have a phone, implying the power that he has to bypass Congress and create new legislation, apparently. Well, it's working for him. Well, unfortunately. And really, Congress should be taking him into task for this. But I want to speak for just a moment on what the Constitution says and does as far as what powers the president has there. Because the executive order power does exist within the Constitution. That well, is something now, he can't uh, do. Our, our friend Barack will be happy to hear that. Well, yes, absolutely. <laughs> He does have the power of executive order, the same as any CEO over a company has the power of executive order to give orders to his employees of that company. Oh. Now, I'm not a part of the executive branch, and so he cannot direct me in any, in any way as part of the executive orders. Executive orders do not carry the force of law. He has the authority to implement law and send out executive orders to order them to implement laws, but those laws have to be passed by Congress. This is the very first thing it covers in the Constitution. Right after the preamble, Article 1, Section 1 says, all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in Congress, meaning all lawmaking power is given to Congress. If all power is given to Congress, how much power does that leave for the president to create law? Well, he's got a magic pen. Apparently, he's been able to bypass the, Cong <laughs> the Congress and the Constitution. And how has he been able to effectively do that? The real reason is that Congress has a duty to restrain the other branches of government. There's these, this concept of checks and balances. And the final check that Congress has, which is really a final trump card, is well, impeachment. <laughs> they know about checks and balances. They write checks and they don't balance and it never the balances. Budget. Yes. That's right. No, that's part of the problem. But that's too. not what you were saying. Yes. I know. But ultimately, <clears throat> if we get into a, a constitutional battle between the three branches of the federal government, a checks and balances shootout, per se, Congress wins. Do you Congress think has we're, the, final, uh, the final say on impeachment of anyone within Congress, the executive branch, or the judicial? Robert, are we headed in that direction with the recent lawsuit that's been filed against the president by Congress? Or? I sure hope so. I sure hope so. That is the, uh, the idea behind it. And if it were to fly, if we were able to get a impeachment in the House and then a conviction in the Senate, which politically I don't see being able to happen right now, that, that would definitely be appropriate. Well, even an impeachment in the House might slow down the, the runaway freight sure. train of executive orders. As with Clinton, though, it really amounts for nothing more than a little slap on the wrist unless the Senate convicts of that impeachment. I'd still love to see it happen, though. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, this president is guilty of having an affair as well, but it's an affair <laughs> with executive orders. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Well put. Well, I'm curious to know uh, what, what your advice would be to voters, taxpayers, mm -hmm. on what can we do? It seems as though it's near hopeless because our, even our Republican friends in Congress don't seem to want to stand up and be counted. They're afraid of the uh, opposition, it seems. So what, and what's the solution? What should people be doing? What you're really pointing to is part of the root problem here, that Congress has the power and doesn't use it. And really, to return this country to liberty, we do need a, a change in Congress. We need to look at getting congressmen, both senators and House reps, who understand and uphold the Constitution, whether it's in their heart or just because they feel compelled to do it by the voters, either way will work. Yeah. I would rather have people in there that really love the Constitution and advocate for it. Yes. But if nothing, nothing more than just simply having them feel, if I don't do this, I'm going to be kicked out of office, that's at least a good start. But we do need a fundamental change of the mindset in U.S. Congress. And the only way that's going to happen is if we, the American people, are holding them to the Constitution. Again, like we've said before, we need to know it so we can hold them accountable to it. 
Robert, it seems that to most of us that uh, this president is absolutely insulated from consequence because by the time Congress would, if it ever does, get a backbone and take him to task, mm -hmm. he'll be out of office anyway. I'm afraid you're right on that. Well, but, you know, I'm not as concerned about correcting him as I am correcting the whole problem. Whether it, whether it happens during his presidency or someone else's, if we can get Congress back on track, holding the other branches of government accountable, and we hold them accountable, whether it happens in this presidency or the next doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I think I'm not we, out for vengeance here. We would agree <laughs> on that. And uh, the bottom line is that whether it's a Democrat, a Republican, an independent, a uh, third, fourth, or fifth party president, mm -hmm. we're concerned about the presidency and the precedent. Mm -hmm. And it's time to hold our president accountable to the Constitution. Yeah.